Hey, what's up friends? Hope you are doing well. Today we are implementing this animated intro with HTML and CSS inspired by the movie The Grey. A nice movie by the way and to be honest the first time I watched it a few years ago I didn't quite appreciate it but after rewatching it recently I was a bit more intrigued since it made me wonder why this guy, our hero, who at the beginning of the film is on the brink of suicide, ends up fighting so hard to survive. Of course, a simplistic explanation would be that survival instinct just kicked in, but a more interesting explanation I found in YouTube introduces the notion or philosophy of heroic suffering. So, at that specific point in time, the hero finds meaning into bravely suffering through a desperate situation and this meaning is preserved until the very last moment. And of course everything beautifully comes together with these four lines of poetry. Once more into the fray, into the last good fight I'll ever know. Live and die on this day. Live and die on this day. Let's code. Starting with an empty project in our Visual Studio Code editor, let's create the index.html and style.css files. And let's also create a folder which we will name images and will contain the image we are going to use. Let's move it in here. Here it is. Now in the index.html file I type exclamation mark says Emmet abbreviation the Emmet plugin is by default embedded into VS Code and if I hit tab or enter we get some HTML5 boilerplate code let's insert the title animated intro and link the external style sheet to the document the default href value matches our file naming and let's proceed to defining the markup for the body. All we'll need here is a div with the class intro. So we are only interested in the intro or hero section of our page. And I suppose we could alternatively use the header tag instead of the generic div. And intro section will contain an image with the class intro image. And a div with the class intro text. And let's set the image source starting from the root project folder we navigate to the images folder and get the specific image file and let's also set the alt attribute. Now we could alternatively use a background image instead of an image element however I chose to go with an image element since I'm planning on animating the image. And in general, it is more performant to animate the transform property than animating the background. And finally, let's add the text. For now, let's keep it simple. Later, we will add some markup in order to be able to target and animate specific parts. And now, let's open the project in the browser. For this purpose, I'm using the live server, which is a Visual Studio Code extension. So this is what we've created up to this point and let's proceed to styling with CSS. For starters, let's reset padding and margin to zero and box sizing to border box instead of the default content box for all elements. Next, let's import the Sinzel or Sinzel font family from Google Fonts and for the body, let's set font family to Sinzel. Serif will be the generic fallback font family and let's set background color to black and color to snow which is very close to white color. Nice, and now for the intro section, let's set height to 100% of viewport height. We don't have to define width since intro is a block level element 
and therefore by default it occupies the entire width of its parent element in this case the body and let's also set overflow to hidden and since intro image will be absolutely positioned relative to the intro section let's set its position to relative we will return to styling the intro section but for now let's proceed to styling the intro image and as already mentioned image will be absolutely positioned to the top left corner of the intro section and it will extend to the entire width and height of its parent element the intro in order to maintain the aspect ratio let's use the object fit property and set it to cover and finally let's set z index to minus one in order to ensure that text will be on top of the image okay and we could of course also use the filter property in order to modify the image for example let's set contrast to 200 percent or 150 and additionally we could also for example change opacity and let's set it to 75% so we we'll get a darker result since background color is black we could also for example blur the image by 5 pixels etc now for this example let's just change the contrast to 150% nice now back to intro and in order to place the text within the intro section let's set display property to flex justify content to center in order to horizontally center it and align items to center in order to vertically center it however i would prefer to place the text at the bottom so instead of center let's set align items property to flex end and finally before proceeding to styling the intro text i would also like to add box shadow to the intro element with zero pixels of horizontal and vertical offset blur will be 3 rem spread will be 1 rem color for now will be snow and insert and by the way rem is relative to the font size of the root element which is by default 16 pixels so if i set font size to 16 pixels and save nothing will change but if for example i set font size to 36 pixels we can see that box shadow now extends to a much larger area okay i used the snow color for demonstration purposes but eventually i would prefer to use black color for box shadow nice and we can now proceed to styling the intro text some very basic styling here so i will just paste and quickly go through setting text align to center font size line height letter spacing margin bottom padding border radius and background color and this is the result now in order to make the text stand out a bit more we could blur the area behind the text for this purpose we can use the backdrop filter property and set blur to 10 pixels much better and let's also increase opacity a bit let's say 2.8 
Okay, and finally let's animate stuff starting with the image and let's name the animation zoom in image. Let's keep it short for now by setting animation duration to 2 seconds and let's also set animation timing function to ease out so that animation will get slower towards the end. And let's specify the keyframes for the zoom in image animation. Starting with initial image dimensions, we want to eventually scale the image up by 1.5 times. And if we save, First thing we notice is that as soon as animation is finished we get back to initial styling. So in order to retain the style values set by the last keyframe, we should also define the animation fill mode here and set it to forwards. Ok, and by the way, since starting state of the animation is already defined by initial styling and animation is only executed once, this part could be omitted and we would still get the same result. Now, in addition to scaling up the image, I would also like to move it down in order to ensure that eyes will still be visible. For example, if I maximize the window, we can see that after scaling up the image, the eyes have almost completely moved beyond the visible area. One way to do this would be by changing the top position of the image from 0 to let's say 22% from the top. And by the way, 22% refers to the container element's height. However, in this case, dimensions coincide and let's comment this out in order to better demonstrate what's happening here. Nice and combining the two, we get this result. Notice that since scaling is 1.5, if I use the percentage greater than 25% here, background would start to show up. And by the way, in our example, instead of 22% here, we could use 22 viewport height. So 22% of viewport height and we would still get the same result. Alternatively, instead of animating the top property, we could use the translate y transform function. Notice that in this case order matters since transforms are effectively applied in order from right to left. So if for example we first moved the image and then scaled, then this is what we could get. Ok, and I think we are done with the image animation. So for now let's comment it out so that it won't be distracting and let's proceed to animating the intro text section. Now since image will be moving I prefer not to add other moving parts so let's make everything else just fade in. For this purpose let's initially set opacity to zero. And let's define the animation, name will be fade in, duration will be half a second, timing function will be is out and fill mode forwards. And let's specify keyframes for the fade in animation. All we want here is to eventually end up with opacity 1 starting from 0. So if I save, indeed we can see that intro text fades in but let's also add a small delay of 2 seconds before fading in. So if I save, 
two seconds will pass before intro text fades in. And that's all basically. Now the way I decided to present this is to first fade in the intro text element empty and then to gradually fade in each line after some delay and for the last line to also add some delay between words. For this purpose let's move back into our index.html file and wrap each part we want to animate into a span element. So we have one span for each of the first three lines and four span elements in the fourth line. Ok, let's save and move back to CSS and let's initially set opacity for each intro text span to zero. Now in order to select for example the first span of intro text we will use this selector nth of type 1 in order to select the first child of the parent element of type span and all we want to do here is add the fade in animation and let's set animation duration to 0.75 seconds and animation delay to 4 seconds so the first span which is actually the first line of the poem will fade in 2 seconds after the intro text container fades in. Before testing let's do the same for the second span this time adding a 6 second delay so let's save and refresh the page Two seconds later intro text container fades in, then the first span and then the second. Very nice. And similarly we add the remaining span elements. The only thing that changes each time is the delay before each element fades in. And let's uncomment the zoom in image animation and set its duration to 24 seconds and finally let's also add some basic responsiveness so that it also looks decent in smaller screens ok that should be it let's check the result Very nice, we are done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. If you did, please hit the like button and share it with anyone who might be interested. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want more. For any questions, suggestions or just to say hi, you can use the comment section below. Till next time, keep coding, keep improving and enjoy the journey. Take care, bye.